Yes. Thank you so much for stopping me to get this recorded. That's very important. Once very shy, crying and stumbling through her icebreaker in 1987. Today, Cheryl Roush is an internationally top rated speaker and has presented on large conference programs alongside Olivia Newton-John. Marcus Buckingham has opened for Marie Osmond and closed for Gina Davis. In 1993, she was the youngest woman and 28th overall to earn the Toastmasters Elite designation of accredited speaker. Since 1981, only 93 have earned the professional credential in 146 countries, including our very own Val de Ford. In 2009, she received the president's citation honoring her contributions to enhancing global communication and leadership. Cheryl is the proud author of the TI sanctioned Heart of a Toastmaster book, which received the best anthology title for the International Book Awards, publishing true stories by 135 fellow members. She will tell you herself, she would never have accomplished these goals had it not been for her own commit to excellence. With our keynote message, Heart of a Toastmaster, let's all welcome distinguished Toastmaster, accredited speaker, Cheryl Roush. <laughs> wow, yay. Oh, happy new year. Happy Toastmasters Leadership Institute. Thank you for being here. Whether you are a very first time officer, raise your hand if that's you. Very first time. Mm -hmm. How many of us have been there, done that time after time after time? Thank you. Thank you for coming back for yet another term of leadership. Thank you. And, and as Julia just said, I would not be doing the things that I'm doing today. And you'll hear some of my story had it not been for the safe and supportive practice environment of a Toastmasters club. And when I first walked through the doors, I'll tell you, I was a hot mess. Oh my gosh, it was March 15th, 1987. So I've kind of been around a while. Yeah. All right. So here's what you can look forward to in this session. And make sure to take a look into the chat box for the download of the handout. So in this session, here's what we are going to do. We're going to revisit what's your why. What is your why? And re-energize your goals and your intentions for your membership as well as perhaps for your club. How are you... How are you doing on those goals, personal and professional growth? And my hope is that you are re-inspired to commit to excellence. So thank you very much, District Director Rhonda, for your theme of commit to excellence because it's, it's everything that this organization is about. So on this very first page of the handout, so thank you for downloading that from the chat box here. Then, and you may have received this early too, hopefully, that you downloaded it. Maybe you started filling in some of this worksheet. We're going to go step by step. So let's have some fun. And I'm going to be pausing shared screen to take a look at some of your answers. So first of all, if you would please light up the chat for us. Why did you join Toastmasters? Why did you join Toastmasters? Whether somebody put you up to it or gave you a notice, or your spouse told you you're not communicating, whatever that was. And as you're lighting up the chat for me, come on, light it up. There you go. Thank you. I'll tell you some of that story. This is me. Aww. Yeah, painfully shy, though. Yep, I was probably, what, two, three years old. My mother, though, was an Avon lady. Remember those ding dong, Avon calling? That was my mom. And, and I'm sure I hid behind her skirts when she would be going door to door, ringing those doorbells. And, and that was probably my first experience of sales. But it's scary, you know, and being out in front of public and speaking in front of strangers, it painfully shy. And then I joined high school and I became, I don't know what I was thinking, commissioner of pep. You know, the one leading the pep rallies. <laughs> yeah, that was me. 
So although being painfully shy might surprise you about me, you might not be surprised when I say that I received 100% of the votes for most school spirit. Yay! Yeah, that, that's more believable. Well, along the line then, and, and giving the, the PEP assembly cheers was like giving an icebreaker. I didn't eat or sleep for three days. Do you remember that? Oh my gosh, I wish I had known about Valencia and the youth leadership programs that Toastmasters has to offer. I wish I knew it back then. So then I met a woman at the Chamber of Commerce meeting and she asked me, and this is a note, how to commit to excellence is to ask people what are their greatest pains so that we can invite them into our club experience. And this woman asked me, she says, oh, you're a business owner. What are some of your challenges? Well, for me, it was giving feedback to my employees. And she invited me to an eight-week communication skills series. She even offered to buy me breakfast at the El Fandango Mexican restaurant right here in Old Town San Diego. And I, so I did, seven o'clock in the morning, you gotta be crazy. Talk about a commitment. Oh my gosh. Well, little did I know I was walking into a Toastmaster club called Voyagers and it was a speech craft series. So here I am 37 years later. So I'm going to be giving you some tips and suggestions that your club consider having a speech craft series as I'm still here today. All right, so let's see. Lighten up the chat here. Let's go back and all right, chat box. Okay, so let's see. Why did you join? Because I wanted to give my employees better feedback. All right, so we've got get comfortable in front of an audience. <laughs> you were voluntold to join. Yep. All right, free food. See, it was breakfast, right? All right, there you go. Okay, and let's see. Am I all right? So then, am I spotlighted for everyone? Is one of the questions is being asked. I see that I'm pinned, so you can spotlight for everyone in in your view. Thank you very much, Donna. That you can do a side by side share, and then you get to see everything here. Your boss asked you to join. That sounded polite. All right, to meet other new people, to find your private voice, and today. Alice Ann, you are a Reverend Doctor, so congratulations. I believe you found your voice as well as your passion and your purpose. All right, so you didn't want to make a fool of yourself, LaShawn. Boy, do I hear that, man. To be more comfortable giving presentations at work. All right, so Sandra, and look at you. All right, to work through your nervousness and to work on impromptu speaking with senior leadership. Wow. You had a speech to give and you were terrified. Oh, my gosh. To gain confidence? Yes. All right, that coworker told you you needed to learn when to shut up. <laughs> Guess what? Today, today, Kate, you can get paid for it. All right, time management. Oh, gosh. I think we learned time, energy, and task management through the course of our regular club meetings. You have a story to share. You wanted to be effective doing it to win a state competition. And I think that, I think you won it, if I remember correctly. Your spouse told me and told you, great, I love that. A way to be more social and practice performing arts during COVID. Wow, that's true. All right, career change. Ooh, after a heart transplant. Well, wow, Sherman, thank you. Thank you for bringing your heart with you. All right. And then the HR department was promoting a new group. You wanted to be a better podcaster, Carolyn. And from what I've looked at at your website, you are quite effective with that. So wonderful. Well done. Well done. Create a vision to retire with honors. Be the best that you can be. All of these are great answers. All of these. So then chances are that there is someone who could be invited by you to your club based on those benefits that you have received. And I sure hope that you are doing exactly that. Just like in this personal invitation for me and I stumbled through the door and it was a crisp March morning. So for San Diego, that was probably 45. Anyway, and I've been here ever since. So what goals did you set for yourself? And I think that a lot of those were already in the chat. So what goals did you set for yourself like Douglas to, to earn the JC's competition? And the next question here is, and that you've already accomplished. So go ahead and put some things... Let's say maybe it was a goal that surprised you that you accomplished. So for instance, when I joined Toastmasters, I joined to become a better boss. I had no idea that I would find my voice, my passion, my purpose, my business as a result of the polished up communication skills. So go ahead and put me, put a couple notes in the chat box for me here and I'll share you a few more 
a couple more things. So for instance, after and working through the advanced manuals, I'm from the legacy program. It's true. I think I earned 10 competent Toastmasters, one competent communicator, 15 advanced Toastmasters, one DTM. And I did all the success leadership modules. I loved being district chair for speech craft, as well as the district bulletin, which received some awards. All right. So what are you doing with your Toastmasters? And then some of you had in the chat box, using it outside of the organization, that's what it's meant for. So don't just speak inside the club, take it out into the real world. The world needs your message. So here I am presenting at network associations, small business associations. And then, and then the more that we practice and the more that we gain our confidence, again, how are we benefiting from our, our practice, from our membership dollars, the investment? We are not a volunteer organization. We may volunteer our time at a booth to promote the organization, but this is a membership organization. So please don't refer to us as volunteer organization. No, you and I invest in this. This uh, We want some return on investment. And as an example from my own story, I was contacted by World Headquarters with two weeks notice that one of the speakers that was planned for the international convention in Calgary had to step off the program. They called me and said, we have stopped the presses. Literally, they had stopped the presses. The presses were in Rancho Santa Margarita. And they said, could you... Could you take this speech? And I said, all right, passport, passport's good. Always make sure your passport's ready because you never know when you're going to go to Bahamas at the last second. <laughs> and let's see then, all right, what is the topic? Because what is the audience expecting? Yes, I could. I was a match. So then could you be someone else's last minute backup? I moved here from San Diego three years ago into New York and I'm not in the city. <laughs> I'm in the country. So last week, this last week, we had a storm outage of 21 hours. I'm good. I have a backup generator, savvy San Diego girl living in the country now. However, yesterday I popped Rhonda a note and I said, could you be my backup? We are predicting another storm coming through and there, it was last night and it's going to start up again tonight. I said, I'm going to provide you a copy of my slides if you would please be my backup. This is one area to commit to excellence. And where I learned it was in my club, that if you cannot present, you find your replacement, period. Don't put it back onto the VP of education. I don't their job, not necessarily. You're on the schedule. So commit to excellence. If you cannot commit to what you had agreed to or that you were scheduled to do, find your replacement. So Rhonda, bless your little heart, she, she was ready to step in. And then she texted me this morning, do you have power? <laughs> Fingers crossed. All right, so then you never know when you're going to be given an opportunity. So here's another tip for how to get the most out of your membership. Always say yes to an opportunity. And then later figure out how. And that's exactly what we did with that. There were 850 people present. For this one at the Washington, D.C., there were 3,000 people in the ballroom. That is the stage that the world champions also competed on a few days later. And, and then there was a viewing audience because we went hybrid for that one as well. So be prepared, say yes, say yes. And then as our confidence grows and our, our opportunities also grow, I was paid to be the keynote closing speaker in the sports arena at the Salt Lake Palace in Salt Lake City, Utah. And matter of fact, Thurl Bailey, retired Utah Jazz, he's two feet taller than I am. We were the bookends for this particular women in direct sales convention. And I'm, oh, I'm wearing this suit today. So this is, I'm wearing the same St. John that you see on, in the, on that Disney design set. Anyway, 5,000 people in each audience. I never could have done that had it not been for Toastmasters and the safe place to practice and a lot of support. So then let me see what goals have you set. And my goal was to, my goal as a speaker is to make a positive impact globally. I didn't realize that would mean traveling globally. That's what I do. All right. So what goals have you set for yourself already? Great. All right. So Karen, you earned your distinguished Toastmaster. Became a better listener. Wow. That's a price. Of, that's worth the price of admission right there. All right. Elvis, to speak more confidently with not so many filler words. Good for you. 
And all right, so Carolyn gained self-confidence, made wonder, oh, some of my best friends around the globe are members of Toastmasters. They're lifelong friends. All right, so Doug, to get your legacy DTM, oh, there you go. All right, so you did that. And you're still setting lofty goals. Gabby, to feel more relaxed in a meeting conversations and more connected because the nerves are calm. Remember that saying of getting the butterflies to fly in formation? That's part of what Toastmasters is all about. All right, to give the elephant permission to leave the room. <laughs> I love it. You found the global family with a growth mindset. Absolutely. Use it to build your skills in auditions. Fabulous. We also have people who are auctioneers. Getting more confidence leading. Oh boy, do we shine when it comes to leading meetings because we practice in our clubs. You see, for whatever reason that you may have joined Toastmasters and, and now setting either even different goals. I didn't know anything about the speaking side, and, you know, like Joyce. I, you know, I joined to build my leadership management the ownership skills had no idea that this would lead to the path that it has. But when we commit to excellence, when we commit to ourselves, when we commit to the ongoing raising the bar inside of our clubs, opportunities avail themselves. So keep saying yes. Now, Phyllis, you wanted to provide better product for the seminars in your professional life. There you go. And, and life in, in Toastmasters does not end at Distinguished Toastmasters. So we'll talk about that too. So Elios, thank you. You built a comedy club. There you go. You know, absolutely. Oh, I love it. Thank you. Be ready to be the backup. Boy, that could be the mantra for today. <laughs> so I hope that sharing a little bit of my story also helps inspire you to think bigger. Think bigger. Think also outside of your club. Because as this organization was created, goals were set. Let me give you a little bit of history as we go into black and white. So here it is, our very first Toastmaster Club meeting, October 22nd, 1924 in Santa Ana, California. And yes, it was community businessmen brought together by Ralph Smedley. There you see him on the far right, looking incredibly humble and wondering what he has. How is all of this going to come to fruition? And it was for the betterment of communication and leadership skills specifically. So that's in the basement of a YMCA. And here we go that this was the newly finished headquarters. And in 1962, he's meeting with the executive director. But here's the beginning of a two-slide quote by our founder, Dr. Ralph C. Smedley. Don't worry, this won't be on the final quiz. Or will it, Julie, for those who are wanting to win a copy of the Heart of a Toastmaster book? I'll leave that to you can decide that. So as Dr. Smiley said, the nation needs our services, and so does the whole world. Through better communication, we can help create better understanding, and understanding is what this world needs. Toastmasters International can be a powerful force in the improvement of world conditions. Here we are with a tremendous opportunity before us. I challenge you to get to work to bring our service up to this higher level of service. So again, commit to excellence. Let us share with others the benefits we have gained for ourselves. Well, that was the vision all the way back in the 1920s. So then something kind of changed the course to share with others the benefits we have gained for ourselves. <clears throat> Thank you, Dr. Smedley and your team of men, because women, uh -huh. all right. <laughs> the men here. Okay, Bill, I see you rolling your eyes. All right. So there were a few women who participated unofficially in the clubs as early as 1969. As far as my own personal research has indicated, it was about seven or eight women all in the U.S., all right, so Helen Blanchard, you've heard her name before, applied for club membership at the U.S. Navy Research and Development Center located in Point Loma in San Diego there in California. Well, on June 2nd, then that's when she applied for it because all of her coworkers, she was a very high level executive working with project managers. And they suggested that she improve her communication skills. And she says, where? And, and the guys were saying, hey, come to the club, come to the club. So she officially applied on June 2nd under the non-gender specific name of H. Period Blanchard. There's a couple of rumors that say, oh, then she decided to go with the name. No, here's what happened. The club 
the men, had fun naming her Homer during the table topics. So out of the table topics, the men proposed what names, because T.I. wanted to have what's a full name, what's a proper name instead of H. And so she needed to resubmit that application. And the club decided to call her Homer. Because remember, women were still not officially invited. All right, so then the overall policy change passed in 1973, and the organization has never been the same. So here we go. This is Helen receiving her membership pin. Yep, there she is. Here she is. And, and just a beautiful woman, truly a trailblazer. And District 5 in San Diego created what is called the Trailblazer Award. And your own district director, Rhonda, has received that. It is the highest award that District 5 presents, which is the home of Helen Blanchard. Here she is being pinned with her international president's pen. It's inside that orchid corsage being presented by John Latin. So a little bit of history for you there. So when Helen was coming into office as international president, she was invited to create a presidential theme. She was inspired by one of the world champions of public speaking. And in her book, she writes about this. And she created the theme of Commit to Excellence, which is our theme for today's Toastmasters Leadership Institute. So she said in her book, Breaking the Ice, my decision was reinforced by my personal belief to get the best out of life, you must first get the best out of yourself. I was convinced that Toastmasters would grow and thrive if everyone would do every task well from the smallest duty to the highest office. This relates to each one of us. And here is her book, and it is still available. Matter of fact, let's see, Valencia, if you could please capture that link for Amazon, it's dp-b, oh boy, those are zeros, 004y73t2 and G, or capture a screenshot of this and go ahead and put it into the chat box for us. So it is still available online, even though Helen has passed. But I will tell you that Rhonda and I were visiting Helen in the hospital, even during her final days. And it was interesting because Helen, always concerned about other people, asked how things were coming along on the Heart of a Toastmaster book. So the book is dedicated to her and you have a chance to win a copy of the book today. So let's talk about our family and about how setting the goals and the intentions that Dr. Ralph Smedley did back in the 20s. Look at how we are today. 270,000 members, 14,200 clubs. You know, in 148 countries, we are one big family. So these are stats specifically right from TI. And then here we are in District 37. There we are. Yep, we are on the map. Yep, you are all of all of North Carolina. I love it. So here's our family in District 37. You have 1,300 members currently in 86 clubs. Yay, you. I love it. Yeah. And then those clubs are put into areas. So there's 45 areas, and many of you are area directors. Thank you very much. And as you, you proceed through your leadership journey, I sure hope that you also take those steps. Area director, and it got to be, I think, one of the most fun jobs, by the way. Do a great job as president, so then you'll be working with five or six other clubs when you become an area director. And then those areas are then into five divisions, creating District 37. But it's all about you. So if you're thinking, oh, they're, they're a high-level officer, whatever, this is a servant leadership organization. You, the member, are at the top of that pyramid. So when you hear the trio, the district trio, the top three officers who are accountable to you and that entire hierarchy, it's all about you because you are the heart of Toastmasters. Get everything that you can out of this, uh, your membership. So how do you commit to excellence for yourself? How do you and for others? So and, and thank you for commenting regarding having a backup plan. And be prepared to be the backup for somebody else as well. And, and what does excellence even mean? Because it's not a pursuit of perfection. That's unrealistic and sets us up for failure. But instead, when we commit to excellence, it means that in our club meetings, we are doing something 
consistently that supports our success by consistently inviting members to our club, asking them what are their challenges in the workplace today, just as I was asked, you know, putting putting business cards for Toastmasters up on the bulletin boards, maybe, maybe having your VP of public relations use one of the templates that's available from the TI brand portal. There's a lot of resources there available. You do not have to recreate the wheel. How are you getting the word out about your club? It's, it's been said for decades that Toastmasters is the best kept secret. I got to say it is. And it shouldn't be a secret because we need to let the world know. The irony is that we are a communication and leadership organization, and yet sometimes we forget our own self-leadership and to communicate to other people that, hey, come with me. You, you can benefit from the skills that are gained inside of a safe, supportive, practice-based environment called the Toastmaster Club. And if you belong to a training program inside of a corporation where as an employee that your corporation even offsets the cost of your dues or your tuition, my gosh, what a great blessing. So let's talk about how, how can we continue to commit to excellence? Well, Dr. Smelly created four basic principles and he wrote about this not only in his inaugural presentations like in, back in 1962, but he also wrote about it in his book called Personally Speaking. And when I was a district governor in the, like district director in District 5, home of Helen Blanchard, then I wanted to know what were, what were the core values, the core basic principles that Dr. Smedley had when he set the goals and intentions for this, this organization? And at that time, I don't know if he saw it, if he really saw it as global, that was his vision. And things came to fruition as the word got out and the need became known and that here's the organization. So he wrote about it in personally speaking. And as District 5 governor, I created the theme of sharing the vision regarding sharing Dr. Smedley's vision. So I share with you these basic principles developed by Dr. Smedley. First of all, keep it simple. In our clubs, in our areas, divisions, and even at our district level, we need to keep it simple. Focus on the fundamentals of public speaking, of communication, of leadership. Keep it simple. Focus on the members' needs. I think how does this relate to the individual member? Number two, this is a do-it-yourself activity. It is. You can use your own imagination and initiative. You can move as quickly or as comfortably through the pathways, projects, through the programs, through the additional educational series that we have, the, uh, better, the better speaker series and present those and our success leadership programs. It's all at your own pace. Number three of the four is to believe in the individual and the individual's ability to improve by developing to the fullest of their abilities. You like that? Yeah. Number four, is it, and this is so true, we learn best in moments of enjoyment. So when, when your top three officers were doing a thing on NASCAR, you know, and coming across the finish line with the, play, with the flags and waving and everything else, we learn best in moments of enjoyment. How does that relate to your club meeting themes? Make them fun. People remember the fun that they've had because they're kinesthetically anchored, they're engaged, they're involved, they're inspired, they want to be a part of something that's fun. So even if your club is focused and dedicated on debate, then find ways to make it fun. Our parliamentary procedure, I've seen some hilarious meeting themes built around parliamentary procedure as in what not to do. <laughs> you can have a lot of fun. So make sure that every meeting has a creative meeting theme. We learn best in moments of enjoyment. People want to have fun. People stay in their clubs because they like each other and are learning together. Feel free to capture a screenshot of this one. Take it back to your club too. So now as you return from Toastmasters Leadership Institute today, hopefully you're picking up some ideas to go back and to share with your club. So far, 
personal invitations, you know, invite people to your club. You've got these four basic principles as well. And share your story. What brought you to Toastmasters? And then think about what are your next goals? So feel free to pop me a note in the chat. What are your next goals? And if it's winning a copy of the Heart of a Toastmaster book, that'll just wear my heart. <laughs> and maybe get you some points too with Julie, who's going to be deciding it. All right, I'm, I'm reading the chat now. All right, so your goal, got it. Okay, so that's your goal, right? And so Elios, you are still helping other people make their debut in the comedy shows. Great. All right, overcoming social anxiety. All right, wonderful. And let's see. Thank you very much for it. All right, so the link to Helen Blanchard's Breaking the Ice book on Amazon as a Kindle is in the chat. Thank you very much, Valencia. All right, great. And then what, okay, so what are your next goals? Thank you. So PQDOMGD103, Sandra Lane becoming the next district director. All right, so PQD is program quality director. That means that she will be district director next year upon election. All right, <laughs> Elvis definitely wants to copy that book. Intense, Julie. Okay, so winning, all right, Donna Marie, all right, winning regional finals and moving forward towards the international speech, contestant winner, great. Okay, so then Donna, make sure that you watch all of the world champion winners, the top three, because all of them, especially last year, again, all three women, and pay attention to the accredited speaker program. All three of the people who passed for the accredited speaker, the professional designation, all three were women, including a world champion, mm -hmm. Verity Price. All right, so then <laughs> Rhonda, bless you, finishing her third distinguished Toastmaster. And, there, and for some people on this session, you might only be missing one project to complete for your distinguished Toastmaster, and it might be speech craft. So I'll, I'll hop over there in just a moment. All right, so thank you, Joyce. Your goal is to become an inspirational speaker. Well, Joyce, thank you for everything. Matter of fact, speaking of speech craft, here's our speech craft chair, to become an inspirational speaker. Then every speech that you give, and if this is your goal, every message you give. So let's not think of it as a speech, like today is a message, and it's a heart-centered message, that people will be inspired based on that it's from your heart to theirs. See? Art, art, yeah. Mm -hmm. All right. So then, having new comedians. Thank you, Elios. Great. All right. Getting your book published. Yes. Becoming a global. There you go. Global international. Great. Re earn your distinguished Toastmaster. Visit more clubs. Definitely. Wow. Getting outside of our own club could be one of the best New Year's resolutions. The goal and intention. A boy achievable, because that's how you get to meet more people in the family. All right. So con to conduct a speech craft program, wonderful. All right. Get, get paid speaking engagements. Good. All right. Elvis, complete your first pathway. Great. Maybe there's someone here that you can say, hey, would you help mentor me? All right. We're earning another. Okay. So craft a speech craft for your, your field applicate. Did I get that app? Your field app agents. Great. <laughs> Thanks, Brian. Get the most, get out of your clubby. Thank you. I didn't say it. You did. That is quotable. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I love it. This is great. So it's important to have goals. And I would say have a vision board where you put something up there that emotionally inspires you to go for it. You know, what is your commitment to excellence for yourself? What do you want to see for success in your goals and, and what you want to do? Well, please bring it home and start with your club. Let's take a look at for a second, what does that excellence look like inside of our regular club, regular club meetings? We need to have healthy membership. And what does that mean? It could be energized people who attend every meeting. That works. How many though? How many? So for instance, did you know that 20 is the number that we are supposed to be at that has not changed? And it, during COVID, I think we, we struggled, but we also came out the other side. We need to rebuild our clubs. 
And hosting a Speechcraft program is one of the best ways to rebuild your club and re-energize your current members. So in a moment, we'll take a look at what Speechcraft is and how you can do that for setting intentions for your club growth. 20, when there's 20 people inside of our club environment, there's more fun. And then you don't need to be a speaker, your own evaluator, and your own on-counter. Mm, you're laughing, but we've been there, haven't we? All right, so we need to have 20 and have guests. So if your club is a corporate training program, so again, for the employees inside of a corporation, 25 is suggested by past international president, Pat Johnson, who wrote the book on corporate training programs and she's out of the HR HR world. So 20 is your number. Please write that down. Please take it back to your club because there's so much more fun that you can have when you have more people. All right. So let's talk speech craft. All right, Joyce, I'm so glad that you are here today. I'm giving out your email address. Oh, that's okay. Well, it was on the district website. So I figured, you know, it's out there. All right. So speech craft is TI's number one membership building educational program. Matter of fact, it is trademarked. So when you see Speechcraft, it is all one word, not with a capital C. Mm -mm, it's all one word, it's trademarked. It's one of the, the top programs educationally wise that can educate and bring non-members into your club and convert them from being a guest into being a member. Remember when I started sharing my story this morning that I walked into an eight-week communication skills series? It was Speechcraft. It, it said communication skills series in the headline, but Speechcraft was a smaller text under that. That's what I joined on 37 years ago. I'm still here. So don't give me that, oh, and it'll never work. Yes, it, yes, it will. Every program, every series that I've conducted has recruited 10 to 14 new members. Now, it could be that hosting a Speechcraft program is the final project for one of your club members to earn their Distinguished Toastmaster Award. Go back to your club and ask. VP of Education, double check. Where are people in their process of it? And if you're thinking about creating a new club, then also reach out to Joyce because launching a speech craft can help you launch a new club. Take advantage of this program. And it's, a, it's digital, it's interactive, hybrid, and online and in person. And it's by far the best way to reinvigorate your current members and recruit more. And for those of you, thank you for lighting up the chat that you want to become a professionally paid speaker. Maybe you already are, and that you might be eligible for the Toastmasters Accredited Speaker Program. District 37 has won my accredited speaker, Sister Valda Ford. We're doing a program on January, January 22nd. So if you want to attend that, there are four of us sister accredited speakers presenting for a club which is dedicated to one of our accredited speaker sisters who has unfortunately passed, but she earned it and the club is dedicated to help people who want to become accredited speakers. So go online and check out, I think we have a, go to toastmasters.org and then on the search parameters, search accredited speaker. And there's all kinds of great information. It is, you do not need to be a distinguished Toastmaster in order to apply. DTM is leadership, accredited speaker is speaking. And there's my plaque, by the way. There's my plaque from 1993. So I'm one of the <laughs> seasoned recipients of it. And yes, I received it when the men, the men were all the judges. <laughs> and I'm still the youngest woman to, to receive it. All right, there is, there it is, all right. So we'll go online and, and check that out. Again, that might be one of your goals. And as Helen Blanchard, I love this. I actually took this photo and I quoted her. I was sitting in her audience when she said it, or at least one of the hundreds of times that she said it. it, it capture a screenshot of this one and take this back to your club. If you get everything out of Toastmasters, you can get out of Toastmasters. You'll never get out of Toastmasters. I never thought that I would be in for three decades. 
and I love being able to give back and to help inspire people. And with my background and, and education and degree in, in marketing and graphic design and promotion, I love helping people put the pieces together of how can we promote our club? How can we build our club? That's why I do programs on marketing speech craft. You could go to my YouTube channel and there are playlists just of marketing. Matter of fact, specifically to become a professional speaker as well as Beachcraft programs. So you may want to check those out too. All right. So Helen Blanchard, we thank you. This final quote is from Dan Rex. He said, I still, our, our chief executive officer of Toastmasters International, he said, I still get excited about what Toastmasters can do for people. Members gain confidence and competence to transform their lives. They veer outside their comfort zone, stretch their skills, learn about themselves and fulfill their personal and professional goals. Through their journeys, members become leaders, able to use their new skills and positively impact others, whether at work, at home, or in their communities. This is the great gift of Toastmasters. In becoming a confident leader, you enrich the lives of other people, which in turn is deeply enriching to yourself. So in this session, we have taken a look at what's our why? how to re-inspire ourselves and to set goals and, and bigger intentions. When you think about the heart of Toastmasters, it's not world headquarters. It's not outside. We are the heart of Toastmasters. Please commit to excellence and share the heart of Toastmasters with everyone you meet. Back to you, Madam Director. Thank would, you, Cheryl. Go ahead, Ron. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. Um, can we have everybody go off mute and give uh, Cheryl the appropriate applause and uh, thank awesome, you. Awesome, awesome. Woo Great job. Thank you. I know it's not the same as being in person, but we just love it. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Excellent. Thank you. One, wonderful presentation and uh, thank you for keeping with the theme, Commit to Excellence. Loved it. Thank you so thank much. Thank you for selecting it. And I know that Helen is honored. Thank you, Rhonda. Thank you, Cheryl. And now let's bring Julie up so she can select our winner for the <gasps> first copy of Part of a Toastmaster. Okay. I have, and it was challenging, I might add, there's quite a few of us in the Ooh. Zoom meeting. <laughs> <laughs> gathered everyone's name so if you wondered what i was doing looking to the side i was making sure i had everyone's name in here we wow. are going to give away one book now and one book at the end of this meeting so i am going to select this wheel and select the first winner drum roll please <laughs> all right Fred. 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 <laughs> Fred if you We're going to need more information on Fred. <laughs> yes, we need more information on Fred. I will need your address to be able to send this to you, as well as your last name and your contact information. <laughs> Maybe you can put that in the chat for me. Maybe I, directed to you. Directed, directed to you. <laughs> so that I have your information and can get this book to you. Pronto. Congratulations. Oh, that's fun. By the way, it's signed. It's signed. It's autographed. Awesome. That's great. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Okay, we are a few minutes early for the next session.